G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, unfortunately things aren't pretty, they are quite scary at the moment. Tuesday evening here in Australia and the markets have really dumped, I mean 7%. That is a big move uh, in you know a very short time. Now there's a few things going on but let's look into it first. At the market, 1.2 trillion and only just hanging on to 1.2 trillion, I mean... You know, basically right on the money. Bitcoin dominance is rising though, but again, that's mostly people sort of uh, exiting a lot of the altcoins and that, and you know, the hodlers are still holding on to their Bitcoin. And again, we've got a story about that. I mean, look at the volume. Super, super low. Really, really low. Oh, 24 hour volume is down 58%. BTC price, again, sitting, you know, under the 30,000 now, so this is not good and GUI prices have actually jumped a little bit and again that's people starting to move coins around getting in and out of stable coins and just selling in general I don't know what else to say and I mean I, I never give financial advice but this is when it is really really hard to be in this space and that's just the truth I've been through you know the ups and I've been through the downs and what I have learned is that it's usually at times like this that I've kind of given up on the market and I've gone away and forgot about it. And I'm not saying exactly now is the time where the big gains are really going to be made, but it's when you give up on something and go away from it, it's usually around about there or not far away from there that it starts to turn around. And unless you're still keeping an eye on it, which most people don't, they just literally give up and go away then they miss out on the really big gains because the big gains are coming when you're still there at the absolute bottom and you're putting your money in. Now, whether you've been dollar cost averaging in or not, you know, or you've just held all your money for, you know, to get lucky enough to get in right at the low, that's where the true wealth is made when you get in around about the bottom. And we could be at the bottom. Look, we really could. But also we might not be. And, and the truth is no one really knows. There's a lot of predictions out there. But look, let's just have a look. I mean, it's a bloodbath at the moment. You know, Bitcoin itself, that was just 29,600. So, you know, a little bit of an uptick in the last sort of few seconds, minutes, but there's no guarantees that will last. I mean, Ethereum, ouch. That was at, you know, $4,000 not that long ago. And now it's well under 2,000. I mean, you know, they're both kind of sitting around about the same. But Ethereum was 2,100 not that long ago. So, ugh, not good. All right. Has anything done well? I couldn't imagine there's going to be anything that's done well except for the stable coins. But look, sometimes there's most of the time actually there's an outlier. So let's have a look. Anything done well? Whew! Good Lord, there we go. So Ucash is up 41%. Uh, I've got no idea where that came from and what that's about. I get the feeling like it's probably some kind of random, excuse the language, but shitcoin. Dash is up a little bit, and then we can see we're just into the stable coins. So really, basically no gains really whatsoever, except for two, again, outliers, and there's generally always going to be an outlier. What's performed the worst then in the top 100? This will be scary. Oh, Rune, Matic, there we go, $2.20. Now it's down to 60 cents, and who knows just how low this could go. Uh, again, it could get quite ugly. Uh, NEM, again, this was a coin that was pumping only not long ago. So coins that have pumped recently are generally, you know, really starting to kind of get hit. And oh, that just looks ugly. I mean, nearly 20%, nearly 20%, nearly 20%, around the 15%, 15%, 15%, 15, 15. I mean, you know, double digit losses across the board. Synthetics. Again, this got down to $5, pumped up to, I think, about $11, and now dumping all the way back down again. Polkadot, this was 50 bucks, and now it's $10. Oh, ladies and gents, trust me when I tell you I am feeling your pain. My portfolio was amazing not that long ago. Now, you know, I'm still up. I got in at a really good time. I got in at sort of, you know, March 2020, uh, late in March, not early, unfortunately. I missed the real bottom uh, by about sort of two weeks. So I'm lucky I've been in and I've basically kept dollar cost averaging in. I have slowed all my dollar cost averaging uh, in at the moment other than Bitcoin. 
for me, Bitcoin, yes, it could possibly go down a lot lower, but it's not going to go down as much as these. That's what I've learned. Now you can, again, go back and see some of my other videos. If you got $100 a week to invest and you want in the cryptocurrency markets, now these are just strategies, again, never financial advice, but you're like, oh, I don't wanna go in just yet. Just invest in stable coins. Have them sitting on the side ready to change whenever you want. If you're worried that you won't be able to pick it exactly, you got your $100, put $40 into Bitcoin and have the other $60 just sitting on the side. And every week or every month or every fortnight, whatever it is, keep doing the same thing. So it's a 60-40 split. You're putting 40% into crypto because you, you know, you're not sure when the bottom is and you wanna at least have an exposure and you got 60% of basically sort of cash but not quite sitting on the side sidelines and you can maybe even have that 60% of cash you know in something like Aave or uh, Curve Finance or you know whatever you want out there just be careful with those some of those are quite risky crypto is risky and then just wait for that kind of bottoming formation when you feel it's the bottom you're unlikely to pick the exact bottom almost nobody does that there might be one or two people who get really lucky or maybe more than one or two but it really is a very small amount so that's something you can do. And then when the market starts to slowly tick upwards, then you can swap that round to something again, like a 60-40, but you're putting 60 into the market, actually into cryptos, whether it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever you want. And then having that 40% uh, still sitting in USD, sitting on the side, just in case it turns out it's not the bottom and it does start to go down lower again, then you've still got cash always sitting on the side. And ideally, and I, unfortunately, I didn't stick with this method, and I wish I had of now. You never want to put all your cash in. You always want to be going by, if you got $100 cash and you think the bottom's in, put $50 in. And you have that other 50 always sitting there. And if it goes lower, put 25 in. And if it goes lower, put $12.50 in. Basically, you're making sure that you've always got cash sitting on the side. And again, you should still be doing your DCAing. And the same thing, on the way down, Again, maybe a 60-40 split or, you know, 80-20, whatever you want. There's a whole stack of different methods you can do. But, you know, then you've got to be, really be watching the markets and things like that. For most people coming into the space, just simply dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin has paid off as long as you've done it for four years. But there are some methods. All right, let's go on to the chart because that just looks really horrible. And look, in all fairness, this doesn't look great, but it's still not bad. Look, we've had these lines in here. Well, I and you as my viewers, I guess we, we've had this line in here. This was at about 28,000. This is where we can see it wicked down to once here. And it got pretty close here a few times and even got close here. We haven't lost that yet. It's still kind of hovering around that $30,000 level. So again, we've been kind of ranging in here for a while. We broke up above, we've come back down. So it's not all doom and gloom just yet. But what is scary? we're about excuse me bouncing perfectly off this line at the moment can it hold or will it fold at the moment it looks like it'll probably fold and then really we're just praying that this 28,000 can hold because if that doesn't we got a brief stop at around about sort of 24,000 and then after that it is going back down to 20,000 and then again we've got good support here but that may not hold. And then we are really looking at getting back down to around about $10,000. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know where it's going. That's the 100% truth. I am hopeful that we can still just range in here and we're gonna come down and hopefully bottom off 28. But if it doesn't, I'm an investor, I'm not a trader. I just look at every time I'm buying crypto at the moment as a better opportunity than it was last week. Again, can it go down more? Absolutely, it can go down by a lot more. But when it finally goes back up, I have bought at such a discount that by the time we get back to 64,000, I'll be an unbelievable profit. I haven't bought Bitcoin over 47, uh, sorry, over 39,000. I stopped putting money into Bitcoin at 39,000 and I went after a whole stack of alts. And I was lucky I bought, I took some profits, unfortunately not enough. That's always the way, and when the market's going down, you always wish you had to taken more. But then if you take too much and it starts to go up, you start to wish you hadn't have taken as much. So it's one of those catch-22s. But for me, 
Again, I'm not really touching altcoins at the moment other than Ethereum. I still like Ethereum. Ethereum and Bitcoin, I was thinking about, you know, still going after Polygon, but even that's been hit absolutely brutally. So I will be mainly focusing on Bitcoin and Ethereum. But again, I will be doing what I have said. It's that 60-40 split. I'll be putting 40% into cryptos. So 40% of my fortnightly money. I will put into crypto, so Bitcoin and Ethereum, and the other 60% I'm going to have sitting on the side like USDC, earning me rewards until I feel like we've hit the bottom. And I'm not overly fussed if I don't hit it exactly. Uh, it doesn't matter. Again, I got in at a good point last March that I'm not sure, you know, it'd be very hard. We'd have to have some black swan event again for me to suddenly be in the red. But in saying that, it could take four years before I'm sort of, you know, really starting to make uh, big profits again. But I learned my lesson from last time. I wish I had have continued to dollar cost average in. But again, with this strategy where you're always putting cash on the side until you see a clear trend change. You don't, well, it's not so much you don't want to because if you're, uh, you know, looking long term, it won't matter. But if you want to try and maximize it, again, that's why the 60-40 split, 80-20, whatever you want to do, keep putting money in, but having that stash of stable coins on the side is really uh, going to help if you can continue to manage that and keep up with it. Because these things can turn pretty quickly and then, you know, suddenly Bitcoin gets down to 28,000, you've got all this cash on the side, and then it jumps to 42,000, 45,000 almost overnight. It can do things like that and may do something like that. Then you're going to be kicking yourself that you wish you had have just put more in. But unfortunately, that's the way it is. It doesn't matter which way it swings. You're always wishing you had have played it better. What can you do? All right, moving on. A couple of interesting stories. So Janet Yellen says we must act quickly on stablecoin regulation. Financial regulators expect to have recommendations on stablecoin rules in the coming months. So they met today uh, over in the States. Uh, and they said they're going to have some regulation in the next few months. Unfortunately, I think that means there's a chance that the markets don't do so well over the next few months. People will really be waiting on this regulation. Now, again, never financial advice. There's no guarantees on that. But I just get the feeling like maybe it means we're going to be going down for a couple more months yet. Just something to consider. No nothing set in stone. Here's something interesting though. So most Bitcoin right now is being sold at a loss. But long-term hodlers are sitting on their unrealized gains. And that's me. I'm not selling Bitcoin uh, at the moment. I won't be selling any Bitcoin until it gets to 100,000. Thereabouts. Maybe a little bit before, maybe a little bit after. But that's where I'll probably take some profits. Until Bitcoin gets to those prices, and particularly if it continues to go down, I'm just going to continue to buy it. Because again, if I buy Bitcoin from 30,000, where we are sort of now, all the way down to let's say it does get to 10,000, and then all of a sudden it starts to go back up and makes its way to 100,000, the profit I will be in will be substantial because I kept buying it at cheaper prices, not I kept buying it at more expensive prices, there lessening the amount of profit that I can make. It's a very hard thing to do. It took me a long time to be able to do it. Uh, I was always, you know, buying into things that were pumped. Well, not always, but I started off that way, buying into things that pumped. And then once I started to see, you know, what a bear market was like, I realized why I was doing it all back to front. And don't get me wrong, I still have bought into some sort of, you know, green days. But what I have learned is that I need to be uh, more thorough at taking profits in the future. And again, everything I'm buying at the moment is, and again, it's only Bitcoin and uh, and Ethereum, but once I start getting back into uh, altcoins, I'm going to be buying them all at massive discounts whenever that starts because they're all at such massive discounts at the moment. So what I will be doing is once they start to get to new all-time highs and things like that, whenever that may be, might be four years away, I will ensure that I do take uh, profits uh, more steadily when you know the time's right. Like I had a feeling like I should have been taking a lot more profit, you know, a couple of months back, but I didn't. And again, you live and you learn. All right, BlockFi. So the New Jersey Bureau of Securities has issued a cease and desist order to the crypto lending company BlockFi. So I saw this today, I was a little bit worried. And then I realized after watching uh, another video by Lark, Crypto Lark, go check his out. 
you only have to worry, or you don't even have to worry. All that's happening is in New Jersey, they have said you can't take on any new more client, any new clients. They can still uh, keep working with the clients they have, and only from New Jersey, nowhere else, nowhere else in the world. Just they can't take on any new clients from New Jersey, uh, and that's really all that's going on at the moment. And they're looking into you know how they pay interest and you know whether some of the cryptos they have are securities because bitcoin's not a security uh it's a commodity ethereum's not a security it's a commodity but they're just looking at things like chain link uh uniswap uh, i think litecoin uh still may not have been declared uh a commodity just yet but it is a fork of bitcoin really so that's what they're looking into and again these things always come out when things are really really bad that's when they just naturally come out and again i'm not trying to tell you it can't go lower it absolutely could go lower and maybe it does go down to ten thousand. i don't think it will but it's possible and if it does i am one of those people that we talked about the other day when we saw just yesterday was we saw that survey and 70 percent or 65 percent of bitcoin uh, people said they would uh, hold their bitcoin and continue to buy more at three thousand. it's easy to say that We'll have to wait and see if that's true. But for me, I would. I don't believe Bitcoin will go to zero. I believe it's the future. So no matter what happens, I will continue to buy until it's in mad price discovery. Then I simply won't be chasing Bitcoin. I'll be going after something that hasn't pumped, hoping that it will pump. And then again, switch, you know, switching between. Once something starts to pump, I'll be taking uh, profits and I'll be looking for things that haven't pumped yet. That's my strategy. You work out what you want to do. Last but not least, this might be a factor of why we have dumped because it's just not crypto. Even the traditional markets saw a big dump. Not a big dump, but what they would consider a big dump. For us, it was literally nothing, 2%. So crypto joins stocks in extreme fear after Bitcoin loses 30K support. So again, the stock market, the Dow Jones went down, I think 2 point something percent, 2.6%. And in the crypto terms, we dumped about, you know, sort of 7% as we saw here. What was it? Yeah, 7%. So, and that's 7% of our total market share. So individual, you know, cryptos themselves, like you saw, you know, they were going down by 20%. So there's a lot of things going on at the moment. Again, I don't want to offer you financial advice, but I want to give you a little bit of hopium. And it's only a little bit because we need to keep in mind we may legitimately be in a bear market. I don't think we are and I'm hoping we're not, but I've been wrong before. I didn't think we we're in a bear market until it was way after the fact in 2018 either. But I was very, very new to the space and we're going to find out whether you know my gut instincts are right at the moment. But everything went down today. So when things go down, unfortunately, because crypto is such a new industry and has such a small market cap and it really is a drop in the ocean in the scale, grand scheme of things, when people start to panic, they start to get rid of their riskiest assets first, and that's crypto. So it doesn't take a whole lot of money, particularly from bigger players, and if there's a mad uh, sort of retail you know, rush to the bank for prices to drop substantially. But for me, I know these are the golden opportunities. I just don't know if this is the... The, you know, the, the absolute bottom uh, of the market and the best time to get in, but I know this is better than getting in when everything's at an all-time high. All right, look, that's it for me. I wish I could bring you more news, uh, and, you know, I am, I am scared and worried. Now, not scared that I'm about to sell. I'm not going to do that. I've learnt my lessons from panic selling. I have more crypto now than I did when I started and I did that from buying low and selling high a few times so if I have to watch this go down by another 50 60 70 percent I'm still going to be all right I got in at a good time I've dollar cost average I've taken profits at you know some good times not as much as I wished but from what I have learned is if I simply hold for long enough i.e it might be another four years but in four years time, we're probably going to be at the peak of the, you know, the next bull run. And I will make sure I take a lot more profits then. But even then, I'm investing long term. It's not so much for how much money I'll make tomorrow, how much money I'll make the day after or the month after or the year after. I'm looking more five to 10 years down the track when crypto finally, you know, becomes adopted worldwide. And I think it will. I think it'll, you know, have its moment where it, you know, sort of takes over 
the the old financial system or at least blends in with it maybe not completely takes it over we'll have to wait and see but i think at some stage bitcoin levels out and i think it'll be hundreds of thousands you know could be a million we'll have to wait and see and then i will start to look to diversify and maybe take more profits and things like that but hopefully by that stage I've got myself a really good position and you know again hopefully ethereum does well hopefully cardano does well and some of the DeFi projects i'm in that i won't ever have to worry about money again but it's just not going to happen tomorrow i already know that all right stay safe be kind to one another pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment but if you somehow manage congratulations to you and i'll see you next time